Welcome back, builders. A little while ago, we swapped out the piston on our Phantom 85 with an MS-460 chainsaw piston. I've spent the past month pushing this motor pretty hard just to see how well it holds up with the piston swap and to find out if it eliminates one of the major issues that's plaguing these motors at the moment. After that, we're going to check out a custom-built hybrid chainsaw motor from one of our Discord members, and the attention to detail on this thing is pretty impressive. One thing you should know before moving through the rest of the video is there are three different versions of the Phantom 85, or generations, whatever you want to call it, where they have minor tweaks to help solve issues which have been plaguing these motors since day one. The first generation used a bronze graphite infused bushing for the connecting rod to the wrist pin. The second version replaced this with a brass bushing that was a bit stronger. And the third version, which is anything you've purchased in the last couple of months, has a proper needle bearing. The version of the motor that you see in this video is number three, where it came with a needle bearing. With that being said, for the third generation, or version, which is what we see in the video here, it's pretty much a plug-and-play swap. And the only thing I really had to do was remove the base gaskets so I could get the proper squish gap. We're using ultra gray sealant instead of a base gasket. Now because the MS-460 piston swap does not have a windowed piston, this allowed us to run a piston port intake, eliminating the reed valve. Whether or not that's beneficial, I can't say for sure, but I did notice a few things while testing it, which I'll point out. Now, standard disclaimer. As always, you know I'm not an expert when it comes to these motors. I just have a bit of experience. Which is why I waited to put this update video on the piston swap off for at least a month. I wanted to get a bunch of miles on this bike to make sure there weren't any obvious issues. With that being said, I feel that this is an upgrade that you should definitely consider, and here's why. My main reason for swapping out the pistons is reliability. I've noticed in a lot of posts and reviews on this motor that they're still having critical failures, mainly with the pistons. They're pretty much just falling apart due to weak pistons. I've seen them breaking mainly around the window and up by the piston rings. They're just falling apart. So I figured swapping it with a chainsaw piston that does not have a window would help strengthen it out. And that appears to be the case so far. My second reason for doing this, which is also reliability, is I feel that the MS-460 piston has a safer ring-in gap to match up to the Phantom 85 cylinders. These Phantom 85s have massive intake ports, and I've noticed that they're not very consistent from cylinder to cylinder and the ring-in gaps of the Phantom's piston come dangerously close to the intake port, especially at bottom dead center. The MS-460 piston, on the other hand, moves the ring-in gaps out just slightly to give them safer clearance without interfering with the transfer ports. Now, I've been told from experienced builders that there can be differences between brands and manufacturers of these MS-460 pistons. I'll leave a link in the description to the one I got, but I think at the moment, at the time of recording, it's unavailable. You can search for other options. I assume that they're going to be pretty close in specs, but I can't guarantee that every manufacturer's MS-460 piston is going to be safe to run. So make sure you check carefully for clearance, squish gap, and any other issues that you think might come into play. Because this is mostly just an update on how well this has been holding up, I'll leave a link in the description to my first video when I initially did the piston swap. This has a little more detail about the piston's profile, clearance, and other specs that you might be concerned about. So go check it out, and here's what we got to work with so far. As a nice little side effect, at least for me, I was able to run without a reed valve. At bottom dead center, the pistons just barely tall enough to keep the intake port closed and prevent crosstalk. Even if the piston was to slightly open that intake port at bottom dead center, I feel that you could probably still run it without a reed valve, as I have seen piston port intakes in the past use very minor boost ports, although the dynamics and specifications about doing that are not something I'm familiar with, so try it and see if it works. 
But before we start thinking everything's perfect and why didn't they just do this from the start, I should point out that a reminder, the inconsistencies in these intake ports might mean that yours is different than mine. And, well, the intake port duration, I feel, is excessive for a piston port. In other words, I have uh, quite a bit of fuel blowback through the carburetor. So it's not very efficient. You may still want to stick with the reed valve. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't run. And you can even put a smaller, safer window in the piston itself, which won't have nearly as dramatic an effect that the window on the original piston had. As far as adapting a standard 40 millimeter intake to this piston, well, it was just plug and play. I will point out that the large intake port just barely has enough meat on it to seal on a 40 millimeter intake for a standard China doll or YD100. So I added a gasket and a decent amount of sealer. It seems to be working because the motor doesn't appear to have any air leaks, has a perfect idle and good throttle response. I opted just to go with a standard NT speed carburetor, mainly because, well, this motor has plenty of power. I don't use it for high RPMs, top speed. I just like that low end grunt and practical power it has, and I get plenty of that from the NT speed carburetor. But having tested larger carburetors on the Phantom 85, I will say that you will get more top end performance out of a larger carburetor. Uh, you'll probably get more all-around performance. I just don't find it necessary for my style of riding. You're free to try anything you like. So let's go ahead and take it out for a quick rip, and then I'll come back and give you some of my final thoughts about this piston swap. If you're familiar with the Phantom 85, you can probably tell that the dynamics of the motor don't really change much with a piston port. 
It still has the distinctive four-stroking issues when the load is taken off the motor. This can be common through many motorized bike two-strokes, but it's amplified on the Phantom. This is of course with the NT speed and stock ignition timing. You can tweak the ignition timing to smooth it out if you stick with the NT, or go for a G2 reed with a PZ carburetor to smooth it out further. Without running two bikes side by side, I really couldn't tell if there was any noticeable difference in performance on low and mid-range power. However, I do feel like the original piston and the reed valve setup did have more top end, but since I'd never really run this motor wide open throttle for extended stretches, that doesn't bother me. The simple fact that it keeps that low and mid-range torque so I really don't have to pedal much is all that matters for me. So, for what it's worth, I don't see any issues with this piston swap. It was definitely a fun experience, and nice that it's worked out so well. Now on to our MS460 Chainsaw Hybrid. As far as I can tell, the Phantom 85 was modeled after an MS460, but has significant design tweaks. But given the fact that they both seem to use the same piston without any issues, we'll be able to give a nice comparison between the two. This chainsaw build was made by MFL Bikes on our Discord server. He's a one-man operation that builds these in his spare time as a hobby. It just so happened that I noticed him selling them to a few of the other Discord members and decided to get in on it. Like me, his time is limited, but if you like what you see, you can find him floating around in the Discord server and hit him up. But keep in mind, he probably is not selling these motors to new builders. You're going to need to know what you're doing when it comes to this. Currently I have it set up on the Zeta Dawn with the 36.2 sprocket. This is not the final build for this motor, as I intended it for a trail bike with a larger sprocket. He actually recommends a 40 or 44 tooth sprocket to run with this motor, which really takes advantage of its power range. As soon as I find a suitable frame that's capable of handling this motor and some trail riding, that's what I'll be doing. But for now, we'll work with what we got. For specifications, we have an 82cc, and that is a true rating. Comes with a balanced crank, upgraded crank bearings, a stronger clutch spring, which is necessary because the compression on this thing makes starting it a little tricky on the standard clutch setup. Comes with an intake adapter, which is port matched to the intake and textured to help atomize the fuel. An NGK low profile spark plug, which is great for tight builds if you decide to go with a custom exhaust system. And the intake adapter is designed to match easily up to a PWK21 carburetor, which is what we're using here. Well, mine's a cheap knockoff that I think I got for about 30 bucks off Amazon, but it seems to be doing the trick. Alternative carburetor option would be a still 090 Tiltson. It's a 52mm bore with a 38.6mm stroke. The entire bottom end is disassembled, cleaned, and reassembled after inspection. And he helps improve the quality of life by replacing the useless bolt for the small bevel gear with something that you can actually remove without a torch and impact hammer. Thank you. The bucking bar bearing, clutch cam, and bevel gears were all greased upon arrival. And getting the carburetor to match up to the intake is nothing more than a radiator hose. It's crude, but effective. The muffler I'm using is a $20 steel muffler that I got off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And I'm probably missing a few details, but that's it. And as far as I can tell, this is the closest plug-and-play option I've seen on a custom-built motor. When I eventually do move this motor onto its desired platform, I'll probably be forced to work out a custom exhaust. But to make it fit for now, I was forced to use my CNC CDH lower motor mount, which is a bit worn out and susceptible to vibration. Now let's go ahead and take it out for a quick rip and then return with my thoughts and opinions. This will be a good comparison against the Phantom 85, but not apples to apples, mainly because of the carburetor differences but it will be nice to see how a true saw hybrid compares to the Phantom.
gravel got me. Whew. That's going to sting. So never let trolls and comets dictate what kind of riding gear you wear. In a couple of my videos, I've had people who clearly do not ride their bikes with any kind of regularity ask, dude, why do you wear knee pads? Knee pads are stupid. That's why I wear knee pads sometimes. Not all the time. Not as much as I should. But I'm going to be regretting that in the morning. Yeah, guys. Look, wear whatever kind of riding gear makes you feel comfortable and safer. If you get dumbasses asking why you wear knee pads, wrist guards, or saying they look stupid, Dude, just, just block them. Just hit hide user from channel. It'll let them think that they can keep commenting, but nobody will see their comments, not even you. It's really easy for trolls who don't ride, you know, pretenders, to say stupid crap like that. Because they don't care what happens to you. My initial impressions of the True Saw Hybrid build after riding it for a few days, pretty impressed. It's a torquey little motor with a lot of practical power. Definitely something I could see heavy set individuals taking advantage of. The builder's recommended larger sprocket combination is probably personal preference, although admittedly I don't have many hills in my area. Still, I found it to run just fine on a 36 tooth. However, putting it on a trail bike with a larger sprocket would certainly be a lot more fun to whip around. Just like the Phantom 85, this motor loves to be loaded down, pulling up hills or from a dead stop, which makes sense due to the nature of chainsaws. But unlike the Phantom 85, this thing will actually cruise at mid-throttle without falling on its face and running like crap, which personally makes it a lot more practical for day-to-day -day use in my opinion. Currently with my PWK carburetor, I'm running the stock pilot jet and a 105 main jet. Seems to be pretty decent. That's not to say I didn't run into any issues. The first issue I ran into was the clutch. It was slipping quite severely, which was odd because as far as I could tell, he had it adjusted perfectly and there was plenty of spring tension. And this I won't blame him for because his motor fell victim to a very rare issue which I've only seen happen once. And this would be easy to miss even for me. The set screw for the flower nut was just a little bit too long. So when the clutch was fully engaged, the set screw would contact the basket and prevent the plate from pressing against the pads with full pressure. It was an easy fix. I just shaved down the set screw and it ran perfect. My second issue was a bit of an oddball. The motor would run perfect, idle smooth and stable, all of a sudden would just die. Now I can't say for certain, but I think I found the culprit and it has to do with my non-optimal intake. A radiator hose isn't exactly ideal, especially given how much volume it puts into the intake. I noticed when I took off the hose that it looked like fuel was pulling up in a small puddle between the intake adapter and the intake port. And I think the reason for this would be due to a lack of fuel atomization in the radiator hose itself. I'm assuming that this puddle would slowly fill up and the vibration from the motor would quickly dump it into the intake causing it to flood and stall. I'll look for better alternatives for hooking this carburetor up to the intake, but I don't see this being a major issue in the long run, so I'm in no hurry. For all I know, this isn't the issue and it could just be my cheap knockoff carburetor acting kind of funny. At the end of the day, it only seems to affect the bike if I leave it idling for more than, I'd say, 10 seconds. And it doesn't seem to ever happen while I'm riding the bike, so, hey, I'm happy. Well, that's it. That's really all I got to say about this Saw Hybrid from my first impressions. 
It's a strong little motor that seems to be built well with a lot of care and attention to detail. This motor sent me back $375, and given that he's a one-man operation, I value his time and find that to be a fair price for the quality I received. I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.